think what I want to do. Mm hmm. Because I want control of this game. Oh no. Okay, well, that's deleted. Over to you with an empty board. Oh my. Shaking it. Oh my. Uh, me too. Okay, ladies and gents. Well, we are three wins up, which is fantastic. Uh, one more and we're halfway to winning the series, which, I mean, it's just absolutely astounding. Although the pressure is definitely on at this point. Uh, and, you know, the pressure is a little worse this week because with Pete having lost three weeks in a row, his comeback mechanic is decimating the cards that we have access to. Uh, specifically, the fact that he has now decided to limit our beloved Aero V Dramon. So whereas All Force suffered for the sins of my victory the week before, Aero V Dramon uh, is the next to be restricted down to three copies. Uh, and ultimately, this places basically my win condition in pretty inconsistent territory. Uh, it is hard enough to find your level 6 at the best of times, and now with my key level 5 missing, it's even harder to do the damage to Pete's security that I need to in order to basically close out the game early. If I can't close the game out early, it goes long, Pete can establish his own level 6, I am pretty much dead in the water. There are no good replacements in the deck right now for uh, these pieces here. We're slowly building out an Imperial Drum Online. Having fighter mode is great, but we cannot access that consistently. Uh, and both Imperial Dramons are basically five cost evolutions, which I can just not afford to go into because Pete will swing over and kill my dudes the next turn. So uh, we're in a bit of a tough spot. I am looking for replacements as best as I can. I have some ideas about what we're going to open to fill that out, but Oh boy, I don't know if there are any good answers. Uh, we'll have access to the other Jessamon starter deck this week if we want. Uh, that will hopefully give us the extra Davis to help pick up those pieces again a little more consistently. Um, and a few extra packs, of course, and victory packs to maybe flesh out the holes. But boy, I'm telling you, there is just no good replacement for this. Uh, so who knows, we might end up desperate uh, and having to play with Jessamon for a week while we attempt to cobble together some kind of new deck. But, you know, uh, we will see. Let's see what we are opening, what we got to work with, and then we'll decide if we betray our blue boys for the week uh, and run with our fancy new Royal Knight instead. All right, guys. So, obviously, uh, a 3-3 line of Aero Vidramon and Elf Force is not ideal. We have lost a ton of consistency, so I kind of have to try to patch the holes that now exist in my deck, especially if I want to stay ahead this week and make it a nice clean 4-0. So first of all, we do need to dig out uh, the additional copy of Davis and Ken, I guess by extension, out of the Jespawn starter decks promos. Who knows? Um, we opened one of these bad boys last week, so maybe we'll just smush two of those together <laughs> for the lulls uh, and surprise Pete. Um, but just in case that's not an option, we do need to fill uh, the kind of awkward level 5 line that we have in the deck now uh, and maybe pull an additional blue mega because between the three all force and the two very expensive Imperial Dramon Digivolutions, we are just in an awkward spot. So hopefully this will give me access to the Pyil Dramon in the set, which will allow a bit of re-standing action, so basically giving us the extra security check anyways. And if we can pull more Imperial Dramon support later on from BT8, or even pull the Imperial Dramon that's in this set, then there's a good chance at least that we can kind of rebuild our deck around the Imperial Dramon core uh, and go from there. So I'll be opening uh, these as the leftover from my main $50 budget. And then for the bonus packs, I am just gonna put them towards three more packs of EX1 uh, because I very desperately need those blue level fives. Um, I will also settle for a Dino Beamon. <laughs> so uh, you guys have already seen what's in here. Um, so I will just, uh, I guess, put this aside for now and um, I'll run through the deck a little bit quicker after I've gotten through the packs uh, so let's just get right into the action here uh, and I do have some scissors on standby just in case I start mangling these guys uh, but it looks like we are off to a good start all right so we've got Devimon, Megadramon, Andromon, Zudomon okay it's a blue level five consider that Bargemon, Palmon, Garudamon uh, could work with the starter deck if we are doing that. So let's see. Bergemon, Edamon, Ogremon, and Mega Kabuterimon. Hello, Pete. 
Uh, not great at the outset, guys. Not great at the outset, but let's see. All right, let's see what we got. Demi Devimon, Gomamon, Hagurumon, Wergurumon. Okay, we can use this too. Uh, it doesn't really do anything besides drawing you an additional one on Evo, but the Inheritable at least gives you a memory when you have at least eight cards in hand, which we are able to do. So that's a good backup. Salamon, Kursarimon, Wizardmon, Kabuterimon, Godomon, Myotismon, win rate 60%, and Tyrannomon. Uh... That's a hard maybe. Uh, maybe to get the cheaper Digivolutions on Imperial Dramon, but it's still not really, uh, not really ideal. Not the rare I was hoping to see, unfortunately. Uh, I really, really need the Pyol Dramon out of this set. I can't really afford to miss it this week, in all honesty. Oh, that one's looking a little mangled right off the bat. That's not good. So we got Metal Tyrannomon, Stingmon. Okay, that's usable eventually. XV Mon, great. We did need that. More red if we want to <laughs> pull that. Tento Mon, shout out to Pete. Uh, Guru Mon, can't really run it. Lily Mon, Metal Adam Mon, Skull Grey Mon, and Leo Mon. Okay, well, I don't feel so bad about those rares being a little beat up. But this is good. We've got the third XV Mon here, so we can proc the Demi V Mon inheritable a little bit more. Uh, more consistently, anyways. Let's see what this next one gives us. Lots of Metal Mami Mons, Salamon, another Kurusari, Tentomon, am I building green here or what? <laughs> another Garudamon. Uh, okay, I mean, this might work. This is serviceable. Uh, we got a red Mega Plesiomon, not really great. Godomon, another Skull Greymon, and another Ice Wall. I can't use that because we are following the ban list. Oh, that is so disappointing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Come on, let's see a Pyoldramon, please. <laughs> Angemon, Hagurumon, Zudomon, okay. Devimon, Megadramon, Elekmon, Andromon, Edamon, Rosemon, Gabumon, Baptism by Fire, and Seraphimon. Oh no. It's gonna be one of those weeks, guys. It is gonna be one of those weeks. Let's see. <laughs> Shout out to Pete. Ikakumon, maybe. Wizardmon. Another Metal Mamemon. Gomamon. Another one of those. Salamon. Magnadramon. Not the good one. Kabuterimon. Agumon. Emergency Program Shutdown and Ultimate Connection. Ugh. This is not good, guys. We are in really bad shape here. We are in really bad shape. Can I, can I just get a nice super <laughs> to spare my feelings at this point? Gardromon, Zudomon, Angemon, Palmon, Hagurumon, Tapirmon, Tentomon, Piedmon, Bergeramon, okay, Dino Beamon, Vimon, and Kuagamon. <sighs> okay. Let's take a quick look at this. This is good because it's another Vimon and we can get the memory on unsuspending with all force whenever we do see him. Uh, which is important. Um, the Zudomon and Ikakumon line could be interesting because if Pete hard plays anything, we can swing over it. This is sadly useless, uh, but this is also good because again, jamming, uh, we can fill out our stuff a little more. More Stingmons never hurts. Uh, and yeah, the, you know, the extra draw, I guess, is gonna have to work. Uh, I was hoping to see one more of this, honestly, so we close it out at four, but you know, this is what we got to work with. Uh, sadly, we cannot run two ice walls. So, bit of a bit of a bust this week for the main deck here. We did pull uh, some extra red cards that we could maybe use if we want to be cheeky with the starter deck. Uh, they're not really in theme for Jessmon. It's something to work with. Um, the deck doesn't really come with a ton of good uh, level fives, at least. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Uh, <laughs> We'll see how desperate I'm feeling. Uh, and of course, yeah, I'll cut away for a second. We'll open this up so you can see what's in here if I actually decide to use it. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll have some fun and see which deck we're taking into battle. So, BRB. Okay, guys, we don't have a lot of time, but I, I did manage to crack open the starter deck there. And we're just going to look very quickly at what's actually in here should we decide to mess with Pete a little bit this week. <laughs> because the pulls were not great. Um, of course, we got our... 
memory tamers, which is nice. Uh, it's looking like we're going to have to go for Imperial anyways, so both of these guys are going to put in a lot of work over the series, I have a feeling, and the rest, well, I mean, it is what it is. They came with a box. <laughs> but this is what we really care about here because, again, it's just an option to try something a little different. This is sealed only. It is sealed only product, so uh, I could pull this out and maybe mess with Pete a little bit this week while I try and recover from the bans. Uh, and, I mean, what's he going to do? ban a Jessmon, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, but anyways, to get right into it, uh, in terms of eggs, we've got uh, four, basically provides a DP boost, which is okay. Uh, we've got some value vanillas, cross heart hate. Uh, we do have the first in our actual Jessmon line, gets a memory if you play a sister mon, so not terrible, gives DP as inheritable. We have our first value vanilla, uh, one to Evo, which is great, and it's a four drop, uh, but pretty weak. We get the Bauhawkmon, so next in our true line there, gives DP uh, as an inheritable, and hey, he's a 6k body, so that's not terrible, um, especially with uh, the Hawkmon underneath him, at least he's swinging for 7k at that point. Uh, not quite value vanilla, value I guess because it's got the high DP, but still evoing for 3, uh, so not super impressive. Uh, we do have the Savior Huckmon here, the one that is not <laughs> limited to one. Uh, so this actually lets you swing over unsuspended Digimon uh, the turn that it digivolves, obviously in the battle area, which is great for clearing Pete's stack uh, either on his own, maybe swinging over a Mega Kabuterimon, or in combination with uh, Jessmon, you can of course swing over Megas. Uh, and this guy actually lets you play out a Sistermon from your hand or trash uh, on Inheritable, so it's pretty good for swinging warming the board. And then we got security attack plus one and blocker, uh, which is not bad. Uh, and of course, here's the guy we really care about. So big juicy 12k body. It is for the Evo, which has been an issue. Um, but thankfully he has blitz. So even if we uh, evolve him past the turn, we can still get the swing in with him. Uh, and he doesn't stay 12k for long because I can actually play out a sister mon from my hand uh, when attacking without paying the cost. And then basically if you do that, you get 3000 DP and security attack plus one. So in combination with Savior Huckmon over here, we can swing over Pete's Megas um, while putting out a body. Um, swing over even Susanomon if we want to, if we have the DP boosting inheritables. Uh, so it's quite nice, or we can just go ham on his security and say, yeah, you can answer this, fine, but then I've got the Sistermons in there too uh, to hopefully chip out the rest of your security there. So a really nice card, uh, and if we are smushing the two starter decks together, uh, this is going to be an instant four of. We do have Gankumon here, uh, which gives you the ability basically to play out a Sistermon uh, when you're digivolving. Same thing uh, as, well, similar thing as Jessmon, uh, but you get to de-digivolve one on two opposing Digimon. So I can revert uh, Pete's Megas to Ultimates maybe and then punch over them with Gankumon, uh, or even de-digivolve the Susanomon if I want to, and with enough DP boosters, uh, swing over the Hercules Kabuterimon, which would be pretty nice. Uh, we do have our sister mons here, so this one, you hard drop it for three, draw two, pitch one, not bad, and then it gives decoy uh, for red and black, so you pop this basically instead of your uh, red or black Digimon if they're going to be destroyed uh, by card effects specifically. This sister mon is a searcher and it gives the Royal Knights reboot, which is sort of relevant. It forces Pete to have the Digiburst on his Hercules Kabuterimon if he wants to swing over Jessmon or Gankumon. So that's pretty good. Um, or it'll force him to use uh, his suspending spells, which, you know, fine, do that. That's just more memory you're using to not go up into your mega. Basically, we have a DP booster uh, that gives piercing as well. So great, again, for swinging over Pete's bodies, especially in combination uh, with Savior Huckmon and its effect. Uh, and in security, it's half of a hammer spark, which is not bad. Not bad at all. Um, we have a pseudo memory boost. Uh, basically, this searches for your Royal Knights, Sister Mons, or Huckmons. Uh, and then on the following turn, you can basically pop it to reduce the Digivolution cost of any Digimon by one. Uh, on that turn. So this is really great, obviously, for seeing all your pieces, especially in red, which tends to be a bit of an inconsistent mess. Um, with the two costs there, I can give Pete a taste of his own medicine uh, and memory choke him quite a bit. Uh, this is just a fantastic way to end your turn uh, if somebody does not have a memory tamer. So it's really great. And the effect out of security is basically the same. So win-win. And then, of course, we have our generic uh, big body removal. will not clear Susanomon, which is important to note. Um, but it will kill the Hercules Kabuterimon, albeit at a cost that Pete can easily replace it with. But, you know, if it gets hit in security, I mean, it activates the main, so there you go. 
So I think, especially with the fact that the pulls this week are not really gonna let me close the gap um, in the deck as it is right now, this will maybe buy me a little time, allow me to uh, go into next week with a victory, the couple extra packs, and then start fleshing out, I guess, the Imperial Dramon side of the deck. But I do have to do a little bit of thinking because obviously we don't have an on-color memory tamer available to us. Uh, we do have two red memory boosts, uh, but basically it's going to be a two-starter to build plus a few red cards here and there that we pulled. So I don't know. It's a little bit of a toss-up. Uh, I am going to go to the drawing board and we'll see realistically if we want to ride into battle with Jespawn for the lulls and for the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the, the surprise advantage. Um, but if not, I mean, we'll just plug the holes and, uh, and roll into it. So let's see how we do, guys. Uh, we'll jump into the deck profile now and see what we're working with. All right, ladies and gents, we are, in fact, going there. It's going to be a Jessmon week. And while that kind of means going back to square one and just smushing together two starter decks, you know, uh, it's a much newer starter deck, so we can at least count on a bit of power creep to help us edge out Pete's bugs. Now, the idea of the deck is, well, extremely straightforward. You climb up to Jessmon, you swing, you spawn a bunch of Sister Mons, you swing again on the next turn with your Jessmons and your Sister Mons, and just wipe your opponent out from there. Uh, putting five damage on board is not an issue for this deck, believe me. Now, looking at Jessmon himself, having Blitz is supremely valuable in a sealed format here. The 4 Evo cost would normally be a death sentence for, you know, most cards. Certainly, uh, it makes all force a little more difficult to, to get out and start swinging with right away. But, you know, um, thanks to Blitz, we are able to promote from the level 5 and then just kind of get going and do what the deck wants to do. And for the most part, uh, Jessmon doesn't really have any counters in this particular format. You know, in the absence of Death Exmon, Pete has no way to deal with the wide board that I can set up, thanks to the one, two Sistermon that I can spawn basically every time that I swing, assuming I have the right inheritable. Uh, and you know, uh, it gets security attack plus one when you play a Sistermon by card effect, so uh, yeah, we're punching through security pretty quickly. Now, as cool as Jessmon is, Savior Huckmon is the piece that really makes it all come together. It lets you spawn a Sistermon from your hand or trash when attacking. So this, in addition to Jessmon's own when attacking skill, basically gives you two Sistermons every time you swing. And again, you're able to recur some of the resources from your trash, which, you know, uh, is great because we, well, we, we burn a lot of our own resources in this deck. So yeah, not a bad card, right? Uh, arguably the best card in the deck. Sadly, the rest of the Jessmon line is a little underwhelming. Uh, Bal Huckmon, for example, just gives you a little DP boost, but you know, it is all turns, so that can come up because Pete likes to make his own stacks really, really big and swing over our guys. So maybe, you know, this forces him to trade with a Jessmon, for example. And likewise, Huckmon will provide you a little bit of a DP boost on all turns, assuming you're a Huckmon or a Royal Knight. But it also has this cool little uh, on-field effect where if you play a Sistermon out, it'll net you an extra memory. So, you know, it can make your Sistermon Blancs a two cost, for example, which, uh, you know, it can come up. It's pretty nice. The Gankumon provides a bit of control, de-digivolving when you spawn a Sistermon by card effect instead of, you know, just doing Oongabunga big damage like Jessmon. And it also costs less than Jessmon, so you can keep turn and potentially combo off even more after you've played out a Sistermon with his own effect. Black War Greymon is a spicy tech to hopefully provide an out to Pete's perpetually annoying Izzy's. Uh, and you know, we do have access to a black source in this deck, so it's totally doable. And with that black source, it's, it's possible to take three Izzy's out uh, in one go, which, yeah. Uh, I really hate Izzy, <laughs> so Black War Greymon is a must-have, uh, if you ask me. Omnimon Alter S kind of just seemed like a fun inclusion, to be honest, but, you know, it does actually provide an answer to Pete's wider Rookie Rush-style boards, and as a Royal Knight, it is supremely searchable in this deck. Also, it's my own white level 7, and while it's not as good as Susanomon, goddammit, I'm gonna play this anyways. Uh, but speaking of search, uh, from Master to Disciple, essentially fills the role of a memory boost, you know, giving you that extra little bit of consistency. 
It lets you dig three cards deep, nets you one of a Sistermon, Huckmon, or Royal Knight, and then trashes the rest. So while, yes, this is going to burn through your deck a little bit, cards like the aforementioned Savior Huckmon and Gankumon can pull cards out of the trash, so it's never really a, a total loss. And, you know, the delay effect is really nice too, letting you cut down your Digivolution costs by one once per turn. But of course, I did also pepper in two red memory boosts since, yeah, the, the lines in this deck are a lot thinner than I'm comfortable with. Uh, and, you know, there's also the added bonus of being able to hard play this without giving Pete a juicy body to swing over, pierce, uh, and then just trash my security into oblivion. Sister Mom Blanc provides a bit of cycle for the deck, letting you pitch one card from your hand in order to draw two when you play it. This will help you see your pieces from your very, very thin lines, and it can let you pitch other Sister Mons to play them out from the trash later, which is some excellent synergy. Sister Mon Seal is basically an additional copy of From Master to Disciple on legs, and it has the added bonus of restanding your Huckmons and Royal Knights at the start of the opponent's turn. And finally, Izzy is going to have to be our memory tamer of choice because, well, uh, there's nothing else that really fits. And since, you know, we're in a sealed format, I can at least afford to play a memory tamer in this particular version of Jessmon without the fear of bringing Death Axemon down on my head. Now look, this is obviously not the most consistent deck in the world, and, uh, well, it's not the most consistent version of Jessmon in the world, which is, is saying a lot. Uh, if it doesn't draw well, it's going to be a really rough time, and that is despite the copious amounts of search and filter that we play in the deck. But, but, if I can see my main line, there's actually a good chance that we kill Pete over the course of two turns, which is just, it's too tempting to pass up, at, at least for one week. It is a gamble, yes, but you know, we're, we're just trying to have a little fun this week, try something new stall while we get more pieces for all force or imperial or whatever the hell the deck is turning into at this point uh so yeah we're gonna roll with what we've got uh and with all of that out of the way let's jump into the match and see if we can somehow finagle uh, a clean 4-0 victory for ourselves this week all right so heading into game one pete wastes no time flashing his new memory tamer dropping down a Ken that I very obviously need to answer in kind with my own memory tamer. In this particular case, the Izzy. Now, uh, I think it's fair to say that Pete is going to get a lot more mileage out of his memory tamer than I will in this particular game. In fact, it's not long before Pete gets all the way up into his Hercules Kabuterimon in raising, thanks to uh, the little extra kick from Ken over there. Whereas, despite having my own memory tamer and playing out two red memory boosts, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I don't see my pieces. Jessmond is a bit of a brick fest, so I am told. And, you know, it, it's bad enough that it gets to the point where I have to come out and start swinging with Savior Huckmon, or just risk the embarrassment of being, well, I guess 5-0 technically, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, but this obviously ends as predictably as possible. He promotes, swings over my dude, trashes a bunch of my security, and then the next thing you know, he uh, he drops the Susanomon on me, which is just, it's total BM at this point. I think what I want to do, mm -hmm. because I want control of this game. Oh no. Okay, well, that's deleted. Over to you with an empty board. Oh my. Shaking it. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, me too. Uh, and you know, my, my entire security stack just disappears on the next turn. <laughs> and then Pete drops his very first hybrid for game, wrapping things up pretty convincingly in game one. Game two does get off to a much better start for me since I actually have a few pieces in hand this time. And, you know, if I get lucky, I can probably draw into my level six soon enough. Pete, on the other hand, obviously has a bad hand. He just drops a Florum on turn one and then follows that up with another one in Raising. So, you know, he can rookie rush me if he really wants to, and I'm getting the sense that that's where he's going because he slaps down a Tentomon. Uh, and with just three blockers in the deck, and, you know, those three being very expensive uh, for Evo costs, yeah, I'm starting to worry a little bit. And I am still missing my level six at this point, so I have to just hard drop a CL. I see absolutely 
nothing off of it. Uh, trash three cards, because hey, why not? And, uh, you know, where I was feeling good at the outset, now, now I'm in a rough spot. But Pete doesn't quite rush me down. He instead decides to take the turn to go up into his Mega Kabuterimon instead, which gives me one turn of reprieve. A much needed one turn. Now, without Jessmon in sight, I actually have to go up into Gankumon, and this does well enough since it de-digivolves the big bug and nets me a Sistermon Blanc for some much needed cycle. But despite all that, the Rookie Rush does kick off on the next turn, but a surprise option cuts it short, leaving Pete in pretty desperate straits, if I'm being honest. And you know, from here, I'm really just able to spawn out too many Sistermons for Pete to deal with, and basically, this is going to let me close the game out. Game 3 starts off pretty much like Game 1 did. Pete has a Memory Tamer, Davis in this case, and uh, he just he gets all his setup accomplished. I, on the other hand, barely see any pieces, and instead I'm forced to drop Searcher after Searcher just to try and cobble something together. Now, eventually, I know I have to start hard playing stuff to try and dig even more for Jessmon, and after God knows how long, I finally get the big guy into play, going for a huge blitz into Pete's Mega. But sadly, I blitzed while under the effects of Ice Wall, which Pete uh, decided to tech in here, and he can totally run thanks to Davis. So this passes him over just enough memory to flood the board with rookies. So with no removal on my side, uh, for example, a Crimson Blaze that I, I totally did pull and did not throw in here, I basically know the jig is up unless I happen to have a couple more Quake Blast Fire Fathers in my security. And obviously when it comes back over to Pete's turn, he rushes me down for four security, clearing uh, basically my entire stack without any issue. And then once again, he drops the hybrid for game. Securing his first match win and admittedly, leaving me feeling salty as high hell. Ladies and gents, we lost. I lost. Oh, it it kind of hurts to say it. It it really sucks more than I thought it would. And you know, honestly, um I just I didn't play well. I didn't know my deck. I didn't make good use of the red cards I actually had lying around in hindsight. And you know what, uh, Pete just, he had a much better deck this week. He, the access to the hybrids definitely put in work. His memory tamers also put in a lot of work. Uh, it is just, it is really scary to see how fast he can get up into a Hercules Kabuterimon now. And you know, uh, after getting my butt whooped, I am a little stumped at this point because, and it, it might sound a little crazy to say this, but it is still too early in the series here to open up the Imperial Jamon starter deck. But I also don't have the pieces for all fours to really keep up with where Pete's deck is at right now, thanks to all of the restrictions uh, I got as punishment for my win streak. And you know, I also can't really keep using Jessmon because I'm, I'm not about to start opening BT6 and BT7 just to start chasing Sistermons, especially since I think they're all in the rare slot and uh, the OG Jessmon is a super. I, I, I just, I don't feel it, you know? Uh, but I am almost certain that, you know, bringing my All Force Imperial Dramon soup next week will also lead to a loss. So um, I guess that's all an elaborate way of saying that it is back to the drawing board for me, ladies and gents. I'm going to let Pete enjoy his victory this week because, you know, um, when I figure out what the hell I'm going to play, <laughs> I'm sure it's all going to come to win uh, next week. Even even if I got to take that victory by just scraping by, you know? So, hey, thanks for tuning in, ladies and gents. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.